Hi, everybody. My name is Olivia Lobalbo. I am from Arrow Animal Rescue, and I'm here to talk to you guys today about squirrels. So I'm going to share my presentation screen with you, and we're going to learn how to raise squirrels from, let's see, um, usually we're aiming for four weeks in the season one curriculum, all the way to release. Um, I will go over some things about newborns to four weeks, but mostly we're trying to focus in on the younger guys. So let's get started here. All right, as you can see, squirrel basics, how to keep squirrels out in the wild where they belong. Get going here. All right, so <laughs> I start with the facts. There is no cuter baby than a baby squirrel. It's just, it's, they're so cute. You may have thought your kids were cuter, you were wrong. Uh, lots of people find these little babies and immediately think that they're abandoned. Um, we're gonna go over some techniques on reuniting to start with because the best thing to do is to keep these babies out. Um, they require very specialized care, including specialized formula, supplements, um, super hard to find nipples and syringes and all kinds of heating components. So again, they're not easy, they're, they're difficult. Um, they do not make good pets. Make sure you spread the word about that. They are super cute when they're young, but they are monsters when they grow up. That is also very true. And if you've had any experience with adult squirrels, you would be like, yeah, yeah, no, they are not good pets. All right, so how to identify a baby squirrel. To start this here, I think every, every picture in this presentation will be a different age of a squirrel. There will be no other animals. So take that into consideration. Just seeing the pictures is a learning process here. Um, obviously they have a long tail that doesn't, it doesn't, um, curl up. Sorry, I couldn't find the word. Um, it doesn't wrap around your finger. If it did, then that would be a possum tail. They, the possums use, you know, their tail as an extra arm there. Um, uh, squirrels have the pointed nose. They are pink at birth. Their eyes and ears are fused shut. They have the longer nose again. Um, usually there's no fur on them. Um, when in doubt, when you're talking to somebody over the phone, trying to describe what they look like, just tell them to send over a picture. Just send me a picture of it so I can ID it for you. They look a lot like other animals. They look like your wood rats, like your, uh, your, you know, a raccoon has been confused with squirrels before. So just keep that in mind. Um, the one thing that you can always differentiate them from everyone else, they will have black fingernails. So if you look at the picture here, I circled it. You could see black fingernails on the squirrel. If they did not have black fingernails, they're probably a wood rat. Usually that's the one I get confused with the most. And when you're talking to people on the phone, because inevitably you will talk to people about baby squirrels, um, you need to ask them some things. So again, say, just send me a picture. That's the easiest way to get around this. But describing it, you know, are their eyes open? Are their ears open? Are they have, do they have ears that point up? Because a lot of the times that's a, a bunny rabbit when bunnies are born, even though their ears aren't open yet, their ears still point up. Um, any injuries? If a squirrel has been in an animal's mouth, we want to see them into rehabilitation immediately. Um, if they have any blood on them, anything like that, you know, we want to see those ones into rehab. If you know mom is dead, um, your cat just brought you mom, something like that, we want to see those ones into rehab. Um, did you notice any fleas or fly eggs on them? If yes, we need to get moving quickly. Um, that can be a, a pretty bad situation. Ooh, let me turn off that noise so we don't have that throughout the presentation. There we go. Um, also, yes, did you see mom around? Is she sitting there screaming at you right now, telling you to give her baby back? Occasionally you will, you'll, you'll look up and be like, oh yeah, there's a squirrel in the tree yelling at me. It must be a baby squirrel. Um, try to reunite if you see a mom doing that. That is the best case scenario. Again, it's really difficult to raise these guys and mom does it best. So take her word for it. Um, has this baby been kept as a pet? When you have a person bring you a squirrel and it's an adult and it's sitting there happily like that in the picture, that is a pet squirrel. Somebody raised that baby, kept it, and it got to the point where it was doing something destructive around the house. It was chewing through drywall and they were like, ah, I have this squirrel I need you to take. Well, thank you for giving me your mistake squirrel that you shouldn't have had in the first place. Um, adults should never, uh, never allow you to handle them. They are actually one of the quickest, quickest to get away from you, quickest to bite you, just the quickest. 
of all of the animals. Uh, you know, I'll take your ferocious fox. I'll take a snapping turtle. I'll take anything, any day over an adult squirrel. Don't squirrels scare me. So keep that in mind and spread the word. Stay away from them if you can. Um, if you had it for a couple of days and fed it milk, if the, the collar had, that's bad. That's, you know, um, we'll go in, in season two and three, we'll go over some troubleshooting and we'll show you pictures of what a healthy baby looks like. And then babies that are fed cow's milk or um, almond milk. I've, I've had ones that have been fed almond milk, kitten milk, all of those things. They're, they're bad. KMR, kitten replacement milk. I don't know who put that on the internet that it's such a good idea to give that to baby squirrels, but it is not. It causes a lot of problems. Um, and you will have somebody say, oh, I've raised five squirrels and they were all on kitten milk, but you don't know progressively down the line how that might've affected them. You don't know how long that person was feeding the, the kitten milk. People always will say things like that. Do not take their word for it unless they have been rehabbing and have, I mean, I rehab close to 200 squirrels every year. So if they have those kind of numbers and they're successful, they won't tell you to use kitten milk. All right. Um, if anybody has kept a sick baby any longer than an hour or two, they need to keep or they need to offer some Pedialyte to a baby. Um, make sure it's warm Pedialyte, one drop at a time. Um, those babies dehydrate really fast. So even though it's not formula, it's not milk, um, just keeping them their gut moving and everything, that's really important. All right, has mom been checking on the baby? You can see this belly here. And in the belly, you see this little white dot right in the middle. So that white dot is a milk line. That is actually the baby's stomach. And as it drinks, that white dot appears and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And it will span across its entire belly when it's full of milk. We call that a milk line. If you find a baby on the ground or a caller is talking to you about a baby that they found, ask them for a picture of the belly. See if you can see that milk line. If there's a milk line, definitely try and reunite because mom's been feeding. Um, the baby should be plump and smooth and not super wrinkly. They shouldn't be flaking off skin. Those are all signs of dehydration. Um, if they have fur, oh man, I found an, a misspelled word. It's too late. We're going to keep going. <laughs> if they have fur, their eyes are open and they're following you around, um, there's a good chance that mom booted them because she's getting ready for a second litter or maybe mom died, something like that. If they're following you around, they need help. So go ahead and pick those up, get them into rehab. If they're acting wild and you can't catch them, that's awesome. That's good. That's what we want, right? We want wild squirrels that are crazy. Um, if they're coming up towards you, but then running away, just, you know, do not feed them. Don't feed them. That creates bad problems. They should be managing on their own at that point. If they get desperate, they'll come up to you. <laughs> All right. How to reunite. Uh, get plenty of space. Give plenty of space and time. Uh, one hour without bothering them should be good. Um, make sure that you are leaving them far enough away that mom isn't afraid to come check. I had a woman call one time. I'd been, you know, I reunited the baby. I put it outside in the box, just like you told me to do next to the tree. I can see mom, but she won't come get the baby. And she's telling me, and I'm like, oh, did you try this? Did you try that? And I was finally like, how close are you to the box? She's like, I've been sitting next to it the entire time. Okay. Well, that's not good. <laughs> you need to leave it alone because mom's not going to approach a predator. That's what they think we are. We're big, scary predators. Um, even for her baby, she's got three more babies up in that nest. She says, you can keep that one. But if you leave it there and it's crying and calling for mom, mom will come back down and get it. So uh, make sure that the baby has a heat source when you put it in the box. You can kind of see what we did with this box here in the picture. It says baby squirrel reuniting with mom. Please don't touch. And it does say that wildlife rescue group has been contacted. Um, those are all great things to write on the box, especially if it's in a public area, but a source of heat in the box and then some natural substrates so it doesn't scare off mom. Um, sources of heat, we have a PDF uh, attached to the curriculum. It has different sources of heat that you can use. The easiest one to tell people over the phone, put um, some rice in a sock, tie the sock off at the end, put it in the microwave for 30 seconds, touch it, it should be warm, but not hot. Um, put it in another 30 seconds if it's not warm enough and then wrap it in a little hand towel and put it next to the baby. You don't want to cook the baby. Don't force it. You know, the baby should be able to crawl off of it. Um, if there's no mom, try a sound clip. Um, I don't know that I want to click on this right now because I think it'll take you off the screen, but it is a sound clip of a baby squirrel crying. And it's just this high-pitched chirping noise. 
that mom would hear or a mom, because sometimes another mom will come in and grab a baby and take her up to her nest because she's like, did I lose the baby? I don't know. I'll just take him home with me. But it's a good, a good idea to keep that going um, and kind of just do your best. If you can reunite, awesome. If they can't, tell them, you know, we do a, a great job in rehab too. Don't, don't be too hard on yourself. People can really beat themselves up about it sometimes. Um, ooh, this is a video of a squirrel reuniting with mom. So there's the box and there's mom going, hey, that's my baby. And if you watch, eventually mom gets baby and takes baby back. Yay, that's successful. Um, always ask people to get these videos because these are really great to have. I love them for training, but I also like them because it's just a feel good project to show other people, you know, you can successfully reunite. You'll hear all kinds of naysayers saying, oh, mom will never come back for it. She doesn't, you know, she doesn't care about the baby. She threw it out. That's not necessarily true. So don't let people get away with that. Definitely try and reunite. Oops, next, next slide. No, there we go. Okay, keeping baby warm. Uh, again, we have this in a PDF, but in case uh, you guys don't have access to that right now, then take a look at this. We have the rice sock. You could see little sock, some kids colored on it for me. They filled it full of rice, they tied it off. Now all you have to do is microwave it. Um, one of those little ice packs, you can actually put them, the one with beads, you can put them in the microwave and warm them up. Again, wrap them in a hand towel. You don't want them to cook the baby and it is, it has happened before. So let's not cook babies. Let's make sure that they have a source, a way to get on and off the heat. And you should wrap it in a hand towel. So it's even the, the, the rice, sometimes it has steam come out and you don't want the steam to burn them either. So wrap it in that hand towel. Oh, once the baby squirrel is warm, let's determine the age. You can see in this picture, they all have different colored dots on their head. That's what I use to mark them with so I can tell them apart who's eaten and who hasn't. Again, in this picture, you're noticing plump little Buddha bellies. You're noticing no wrinkly skin. Well, there's wrinkles, but not um, flaky, dry um, skin. You're also noticing here the black fingernails again, black fingernails up here. So all good things. These are healthy little babies. Okay, um, squirrel housing by age. Competition for food, space, and heat is a problem. Bullying can occur, dangerous obstacles. Don't put two squirrels together of different ages. As you can see, this guy's a lot younger than this guy and what's happening? He's just trying to get that little little nut down there. That's all he wants. And then this guy is like, no, everything is mine. So we don't want that. We don't want them fighting over, um, obviously there's plenty of food there and they're still gonna fight over it because that's just the way it is. Um, so bullying can occur. We don't want that. We also, these are pretty big bars for that little guy. He could probably get something stuck. We've had them break their arms and legs before in rehab. We don't want them to be in worse shape leaving than they were coming in. So keep that in mind. Oops, there we go. Uh, these are newborns. Here we go with a little bit of the wrinkly skin. So these babies weren't, these are dehydrated babies. Um, it's not the worst I've ever seen. In fact, again, in, in season two and three, we go over you know what it looks like when they are really dehydrated and you can see, um, their skull, they can, their eyes are sunken in, they look really bad. These guys look pretty good. Again, we got those black fingernails. Yay, we know that they're squirrels. Um, these babies are zero to five days old. They have no fur. Sometimes they will still have the umbilical cord attached. That means that they're new, new babies. Um, those guys are usually coming in, you know, <laughs> cat got mom, whatever. It's, it's, it's usually mom, mom is gone, gone. She doesn't usually lose them at that age. Um, again, do your very best to reunite. That's that they're not all gonna live at this age. Be aware of that. Um, they can be really difficult. So that's why season one apprentices are not going to be working with these little guys. We're gonna uh, wait a little while and, and introduce those later. But just I want you to know what they look like. That too is a squirrel. So if you got this picture, you You'd see the little long snout, you'd see the ears that are sealed shut, you'd see those black fingernails and you'd say, oh, those are baby squirrels. Nobody should feed these except for a rehabber, nobody. It's very specialized formula. It has to be introduced very specifically. It needs to be warm. Make sure that they are not feeding. Make sure you drill that into their head. This is um, a video of a squirrel latching onto a bottle 
and it just shows you what the appropriate latch should look like. This is the natural sitting position of the squirrel at this age. And you can see that she's dragging on that bottle. I'm not pushing the milk into her mouth. She is drawing it out with by sucking on it. Um, and you can see I'm not holding her to that bottle either. And she can pop right off when she's done. So that's really important when you're feeding these guys. Make sure, again, you don't want people squirting water into their mouth. You don't want them putting that nipple in and pushing the plunger, pushing the, the back of the syringe. That's going to go all down, get into their lungs. They're going to cough it up. It's going to come out their nose if you force it in. It's called aspiration. They get aspiration pneumonia. They die. So do not, you know, avoid that. That's best to avoid. Oops, next slide. Okay. This is a one to two week old baby. So this one still needs heat 24 seven, but you can start to see the pigmentation coming in on the skin. Again, we got the black fingernails. Again, the eyes are starting to bulge a little bit more than they were before. The ears are starting to flap out a little bit more. We have a little bit of fur on the muzzle, a little bit of whiskers going. Um, but again, the, the skin should be smooth and elastic. And this guy looks pretty good shape to me. So that's one to two weeks. Again, we have this all in a PDF, the different age stages with pictures associated so that you can see exactly what size your guy is. Here is another video of an older baby latching. And this one is doing a very typical uh, rooting behavior. So he's not staying attached to it. Now that usually comes from uh, poor feeding, you know, as a human, human error. Like we can't, we're not mom, we're not mom, right? So sometimes they will take charge of feeding and they will draw it out on their own and that's what we want. But then sometimes, and you can see I'm not actually pushing it, I'm just applying pressure to the plunger and she is drawing it out. Um, it's just, it's, it's really hard for us to gauge how much they can drink in one sitting. So just be careful of that. And, and sometimes they won't stay attached if they're uncomfortable. If you've pushed that plunger, they'll keep backing off of it. They'll take a drink and back off and take a drink and back off, even the babies. And so when I get them from other rehabbers, especially apprentices, I can, I can see them doing that. I'm like, let's sit down real quick and go over feeding again, just because, you know, that's a, a red flag that the baby's uncomfortable. Again, the older babies, they're going to be super difficult anyway, and they'll probably exhibit that behavior without you even screwing up. So you never know. Okay. Um, two to three weeks old. Again, now here we go. We're starting to get that little slit in the eye. So it's starting to look like an eyeball. The ears are opening. They will start to respond to sound. You got the, the muzzle, you got a thin layer of fur. You can barely see it in this picture, but we got a thin layer of fur coming in. We have all the pigmentation um, and he's starting to, to sit up a little bit. I call it sitting up, um, but they're you know, starting to move around even in the cage and explore, but their eyes are closed still. But you know, sometimes they'll find something that smells like milk and they'll start licking the bottom of their cage or stuff like that. So. Um, at this age, they're kind of doing all that kind of fun stuff. Four weeks old, they're finally opening their eyes. And you can see this baby just opened its eyes that day. They're starting to become more active. They still need heat 24 seven, a heat source. They're still only drinking milk from mom in the wild. And this age squirrels, they should start to be around other squirrels. That's very important. We don't want them to be without other squirrels because they might start to think that they're a human and not a squirrel and that is not ideal. Um, what else can I tell you about this picture? Oh yes, from this age and below, you're gonna have to stimulate them before and after feedings. I'm gonna put a separate video in here about stimulating and how to do it. You just take a, a wet wash or a, I'm sorry, a, a cotton ball, put it in warm water and you just wipe their bottoms down and it makes them pee and poop. So you want them to pee, you want them to express their entire bladder, then you feed them, then you stimulate them again. And it's really funny, you should also weigh them before and after you stimulate them because they'll lose weight. You like stimulate them, they pee a whole ton and then you weigh them again. You're like, dang, you were just all water weight. <laughs> so kind of funny, but technically you should weigh them after. Keep the weight after you stimulate them, not the before weight. Oh, this guy is so cute. This is five to six weeks. Um, he's starting to sit up again, like sitting up, I call it, you know, <laughs> his feet are forward. They're kind of doing that squirrel stance. Um, still drinking a bottle, but uh, start to increase how much you're feeding and decrease frequency. So instead of feeding 
two cc's every three hours, you're going to start to do three or four cc's every um, four hours. So I, again, I have this all in a feeding chart and it has it written down exactly how many ounce or grams it should weigh and how many uh, cc's you should be feeding, how often, all of that stuff. So make sure you take a look at that, print it out, have it on hand so that it's easy peasy. You can just pick it up and go. Um, start to introduce some fun, soft foods. We have a little strawberry here. That's a really good one. Uh, ears of corn are nice because they're soft enough that they can kind of chew them. And um, and it gives them a little bit of, uh, they're not getting all of their food source nutritional requirements from these food sources. Just keep that in mind. You're going to see them eating a lot. You're going to think, oh, he doesn't need a bottle anymore. Absolutely still needs a bottle at this age. Do not start to wean them yet. Um, but we're going to have that nice coat of fur here. And we're starting to have a little tail come up and do the little curly cue, the cute little squirrel look. It's starting to look like a squirrel. Um, they're very active at this age. They're going to need to go to a step two cage, which again, we have the PDF. You should check that out. We have the different stage cages. And then we get to weaning age. So let me go back really quick. This is five to six weeks old. And then um, the care for this age, once they get into that big kid cage, is going to kind of go the same until it's time to wean. Here we go, weaning age. Baby still nurse for their moms for up to three months. That's a really long time. Um, so you're going to end up putting them in they're big kid cages and you're still gonna have to feed them. So what I did is I would feed them in the morning, put them out into their outdoor cages, they have fun. And then when I bring them back in at night, I feed them again. Again, PDF, use it as a reference. It has the weight and the ages of all these stages and when these um, things should occur. You know, you don't, wanna, you don't wanna rush it, but you don't wanna take too long either. Um, they should have big bushy tails. They might even seem a little bit small. They look like little, Squirrels, like they're, you know, dwarfed or something, but they're not. That's pretty standard for them. Um, don't ever give them a bowl of water at this age when you're trying to wean them. A lot of people will try and put milk in a bowl. Don't do that. They will chug it down, aspirate. There you go again. They aspirate even worse at this age, if I do say so. They will, they're more in charge of how much they can drink and they are just oh, starving all the time. I'm starving, I'm starving, I'm starving. So do not feed them a bowl of water. You can try a drip water bottle because sometimes when we're weaning, they will continue long-term to want to take a bottle. And people will say, oh, they don't want to wean. They still want a bottle. And you have to ask, are they given another source of water? Because sometimes it's not that they want that bottle. It's that they're thirsty. And then you introduce the water bottle and then all of a sudden they don't want the bottle anymore. They're like, aha, that's what I was looking for. Um, and they should have a bottle, a drip bottle of water starting pretty early at like right at four to five weeks when you're putting them in that cage. They even play in it. They just clean with it. You know, they should have a drink of water outside of the milk. That's totally fine. We want them to do that, but not a bowl. You do not want to give them bowls, even when they're adults. They're just going to spill it and make a mess out of it. They'll figure that out in the wild. Make sure that you have bird baths and those kind of things set up when you do go to release them, but otherwise they're totally fine. Okay. Playtime and enrichment are important. Playtime and enrichment is important. Yes, make sure I write that right. <laughs> Sorry, I should have really done a better check uh, grammar and spelling before I, I put this together, but here we are. Um, they're just like human children. They really want to play. They should always have friends, always have friends over, teaching each other how to be squirrels, teaching each other, this is mine and that's yours. And here's how we have boundaries and all of those kind of good, um, good things to have. This is their step two cages. You should be able to put those on the, the porch during the day and bring them in at night. That's a really good way to be able to do that. I want them to be able to hear and smell and see all of the outdoor stuff at this age. I don't want them getting used to your dog barking, your phone ringing, the TV, all of those things. They shouldn't be exposed to at that age. They should be out just getting used to all the outdoor sounds. Let me play this little enrichment. Look, they're playing hide and go seek. <laughs> they did this forever. It was so funny. She would chase him and then she would hide and he would never find her. And then he'd, he'd go off and be like, okay, I guess I lost. <laughs> That's super cute, but it's just funny, you know, they play, like I said, just like kids, and it's really fun to watch them. 
Um, they should be brought in every single night until A, they have a bushy tail. It's bushy enough that you think they're staying warm. Or if it's just really mild overnight, I actually have a screened porch. And um, when it's, you know, getting into the 70s, I'll put a, a heat pad in there. Like, I'm sorry, if it's getting into the, if staying in the 80s, 70s at nighttime, I'll put a heat pad in there that they can get onto. Um, but I'll leave them out overnight. That's that's not too big of a deal as long as they have those options. But what you don't want to do is keep them inside too long. That would be, you know, opposite. You have the opposite problem there. All right. Getting ready for release. So these guys are clearly in their outdoor caging. They have the bushy tails. They are cracking a walnut and eating it on their own. Cracking a nut is one of the requirements for release. They are big. They look like squirrels. They're super cute. You see lots of friends in the cage here. Ba, 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 bom. Once they begin the weaning process, it's important to begin taking them outside during the day and bringing them back in at night. So we talked about that a little bit. We get them outside during the day, bring them in at night. That way they're getting acclimated. As soon as you can leave them out overnight, start leaving them out overnight. Um, it's not uncommon that they want to choose to speed up the process of weaning. Sometimes they are self weaners. Don't <laughs> self weaner. Don't let that discourage you. Go at their pace. Keep an eye on their weight. As long as you can continue to weigh them every day, do it. As soon as they get to the point where they don't want you handling them, don't force the weights. Um, and also just keep an eye on their energy levels. If you're noticing lethargy and they're kind of looking really crummy, bring them back in, start bottle feeding them again, boost them back up and then put them out a week later, try it again. Um, it's not uncommon that they want to wean or you just, maybe you missed a feeding last night and they're looking kind of crummy, that's, it happens. Um, and then you just have to get them back up to speed and then try again. So, um, and I was talking about the little hide boxes in their cage. You should never go into a hide box. That was one of the rules I forgot to mention. Um, they definitely use it for privacy. They store things in it. I don't know what they do, but they don't want you in there. <laughs> Make sure that you don't go into the hide box. A little bit more about hide boxes. Uh, just the obvious, like being able to take it in and out. They're really expensive. I would mention that. You can get them on Amazon for like $50 a piece, or you can ask your local Eagle Scouts to make them or a company um, uh, donation day. Sometimes big companies will get together and do the craft and everything, and it's kind of fun. There's also a lot that you they can take with them when you do release them. What I do is I take it for a release, and it has brackets on the back when I make them. I put brackets up in the tree. And then when I go to release them, I just clog that little hole, climb up the ladder, mount one bracket onto the other bracket like that. And then it stays stable and it holds up to 30 pounds, which obviously the squirrels are not 30 pounds, but they should release with friends. Once you get them on there, you just take the covering off the hole. They get to go out, scurry about. And at nighttime, they get to come back in and have that safe place to go to. Uh, we have the PDF blueprints of squirrel box structures. So if you want to see those, definitely reach out. Because again, if you have a company who's willing to sit down and make them, that's awesome. So go with that. There we go. <laughs> Look how good that picture is. One of my rehabbers for Arrow takes these pictures of these outdoor guys. Just let show you again. Just look at these. They're just so cute. Uh, that is the perfect picture. It's a sign that they're ready. Do they have a bushy tail? Are they hiding when you come in to feed them? That's a big sign. Can they crack a nut on their own? Is the weather appropriate for the next couple of days? Are there no other reasons for concern about their ability to survive in the wild on their own? This gets tricky. So you should always talk to your sponsor about who you're releasing and take into consideration things like if they're missing an eye, that might not be a good candidate for release because he's not gonna be able to react as well. He's not gonna see predators coming from this side and they are prey animals. So they need that ability. Uh, I had squirrels that just came in and didn't have a tail. If there was no bushiness on their tail, there no, no hair. I had one that was electrocuted. He could not release until he regrew that fur. So things like that are really important to keep your eye out for and talk to your sponsor. Don't make that decision that they're ready to go without the sponsor putting eyes and, and kind of seeing that stuff. And then finally, you're going to say goodbye. And it's hard. And, um, you know, you're not going to want to, but you'll still, 
if you release them on property, there's two releases. There's hard and there's soft. A hard is when you take that squirrel box, you mount it in the tree and you leave them wherever. It's somebody else's property, somewhere that's, you know, it's great wooded lot, whatever. Um, or you can do a soft release on your own property if your neighbors are non-existent and they, or they really like squirrels. You don't want to release all of them near your house. That is fact. You Even if you have 100 acres, they're not going to go too far and they're going to start to get into your attic. They're going to get into your car. They're going to get into all kinds of problems, trouble. Just don't do it. As much as you can spread them out, spread them out. Um, and then... Yeah, you'll still see them when you do the soft release. You just open the door one day, they go out at night, they come back in, you shut the door. And then one day they don't come back. They're building nests all over the place. And they say, so long, it was fun. And they go on to be wild little squirrels. So don't be too sad. In just a couple months, you'll have more baby squirrels and you'll get to do it all over again. So that was my quick, fast little review of how to raise baby squirrels from start to finish again. You should really print out those PDFs, keep them in your binder, have a little hands-on guide because you'll forget all of this pretty soon. And all you'll remember from this presentation is how cute these squirrels are in all these pictures. Okay, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks.